Hi everybody and uh, welcome to this new edition of Read Game Presents and this time is the price value. Really happy to see you all here and uh, today we are uh, broadcasting from a very special uh, location. Here with me are some of my students from the Tourist Quality Management uh, course organized by Uniform and uh, we are in Milan right now. Uh, the best Western Concord and Taurus, that's correct, I always yeah. get it wrong. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. We got some new brains. You know, all these people here will be the people that will take our job in a few years. So you know, just make sure that they got the right, uh, the right information. Guys, say hi to the camera. Hi. Very good. Very good. So um, we got, uh, we got, uh, we got a lot of people today. We got a lot of content. So this will be a lot of fun. Uh, just um, uh, make sure that. If you want to, if you want to ask any question, and if you want to interact with us, uh, you got a, you got a chat, so you can uh, write whatever whatever message you want to. We will see it on the big screen, and uh, we will we will answer your question. Okay. So um, I have my assistant here, so she can help me out with uh, with the slides. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for helping out with this. It's uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. Okay, so let me introduce uh, all our speaker today. We got uh, uh, Susanna Albrecht. I'm pretty sure I will never, I will never uh, say it right. Uh, so that should be something like Susanna, right? Am I correct, Susanna? Susanna, yes. You can say Susanna. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I call you Susie. I think it's even, it's even easier. Oh, okay. you can call me whatever you like. <laughs> So regional VP of states of ASHR Europe. So we are very honored to have you here with us. Uh, thank you so much. And then we have Ulrich Kastner. Jesus Christ, today it's very hard for me, you know. And the CEO and founder of uh, uh, my hotel shop. So we are extremely happy to have you on the on the panel with us today, Ulrich. Can you hear us? Yes, I'm just on mute here, so I don't have any background noises, but I can hear you pretty good. Hi, Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us. And then we got our uh, Alejandro Gomez, uh, SVP Sales of uh, Europe and uh, Latin America at uh, Red Game. Hi, Alejandro. Como estas? Bien, bien. Y tú, well, como, como siamo tutti allá? Tutto posto? Yeah, kind of. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So okay. trying. You know, I always try, but uh, it's a working yeah. progress. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's what I do with French. You know, I usually just add an S at the end. So, you know, 99% of the time it works. So, we could. So, thank you so much for being uh, here with us. And thank you so much for, for organizing the, the event. Uh, as you know by now, uh, last available room and the price venue are two uh, webinars organized uh, by, by Red Gain. And uh, so it's you know it's always a pleasure to 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 uh, to be with you guys. Uh, and so uh, today that is our you know uh, big boss when it comes to panels is uh, is actually talking to another event in Paris that I keep on them. So we switched place. I I am doing this and I sent Enzo to Paris. You know it's it's fair enough. So I will be I will be moderating the panel. Okay, um, please my assistant. Can you move to the next slide? So you just remember you click there, you click. Uh, very good, very good. Okay. So just a few words about uh, just a few words about the webinar itself. So it's a series that you know we, what we're trying to do. We're trying to have uh, experts in uh, uh, in the hospitality industry, both from the uh, revenue management point of view and uh, technology point of view and marketing point of view. You know, so we got uh, good trends, uh, fresh information. Everything is non-commercial. Everything is, you know, uh, it's it's a very it's a very free space here, so we can discuss about pretty much uh, everything that uh, that we want. Move to the next slide, please. Uh, okay, very good. So the subscription is uh, is free, of course. Uh, again, open open talk and open discussion. Uh, usually, this is about forty-five minutes. Uh, it could take maybe up five minutes extra if you got some some cool question. Uh, we have always three special guests and uh, one or two moderators. Today will be will be just me 
uh, we tend to be in, uh, be in Paris. And as I told you, we got a real time chat and survey. So if, uh, if you want to ask any question, just feel free to write on the on the chat and uh, and make sure that uh, we got the answer so we can answer. Uh, so this is actually the fourth uh, we did so far, yes. Um, we started with taking a strategic approach to rate parity, then we had the revenue versus marketing part one, then we had the last available room, and uh, today is the price value. And uh, the next one will be news and trends for travel and hospitality industry. You can move to the next one, please. Uh, it's what we are trying to do with this kind of webinar is always to make sure that we are not just sitting in our offices, but we always want to find some cool locations. So the first one was uh, uh, Ushuaia e Pizza. So just we kind of remember Alcovit. Uh, you can move to the next one. Then we did uh, Elia Sky, that was another very very good location. Uh, and then the last one we were at uh, you know uh, the Booking.com. Uh, offices in Amsterdam, so I just want to thank I want to thank Booking.com again for for having us. Uh, and then World Travel Market, we were in this beautiful yacht, uh, Sunburn yacht in, in London, just the first day of World Travel Market, so that was a lot of fun as well. And uh, today we don't have drinks yet, uh, but we have a lot of students, so we are here with the guys from from uh, Uninform Group, and I want to thank Uninform Group, and I want to thank personally. Uh, Michele Jordan to make it uh, to make to make it possible, and you know, and we are very really, very really, very happy to to uh, to have this opportunity. Okay, guys. So uh, as I told you, these are our speakers today. So we got the beautiful Susanna, we got Ulrich, and we got Alejandro. So we can start with uh, uh, Susanna. Uh, are you ready to go, Susanna? Yes. Very very good. Okay, so. Uh, these are uh, okay. Just you know, you kind of know who I am, but uh, you know, <laughs> my, uh, the few people that live in the planet Tatooine for the last 20 years, I am Simone, and uh, you know, travel tech writer for Bose Wire and Publish Author and blah blah blah, whatever. You know, just I just have a lot of fun doing this, so that's that's Simone. And uh, you can move to the next one. So, uh, Susanna, you can start. Uh, whenever you want me to change the slides, just you know, tell the magic word next, and our beautiful assistant will do it for you, okay? Will do. Thank you very much. Let me introduce uh, myself once again. So, my name is Susanna, and I'm VP Sales um, for Europe, and um, I'm working at SHI, and SHI is a global provider of central reservation systems. But I'm also a revenue manager and held several um, senior positions in revenue management, distribution, and marketing throughout um, Europe and Australia. So thank you for having us. And um, I would like to kick off this very exciting topic um, by showing the next slide, please. Beautiful. So the question about this webinar is really what needs to be considered for a successful pricing strategy. And my take on this is before you even talk or think about pricing, you really have to understand your target market. So who are your guests, or which guest type really fits to your property and how can you reach them? How do they book? So basically that means also not just understanding the channel they're booking through, but also understanding who is that persona sitting there? Is that a family hunting for a deal? Is that a corporate traveler? Is that a leisure traveler? So basically really making sure that you understand who you are dealing with to make yeah, good decisions on, on pricing and strategies in general. Um, obviously, when we are talking about um, pricing, we constantly have to monitor our competitor hotels as well. Especially nowadays, um, when new hotels pop up every every few weeks in every city, um, it's very important to understand what they are doing, what they are offering, and what their business mix is like. Because then you can actually actively try to shift um, business from your competitor hotels into your own property. Um, OTAs and meta search definitely a big big topic today. Um, it's a very good tool to use OTAs and meta search channels for, for global reach because not every hotelier, um, whether it's an individual hotel or whether it's a big chain, um, can really afford to do marketing worldwide. It just simply doesn't happen. So um, my recommendation here is use the OTAs which bring you benefit and, and make sure you have a healthy business mix at the end of the month. 
Last but not least, obviously, we want direct bookings. Direct bookings are very important for your profit, but they're also important to increase loyalty of your guests. So make sure that you have a good marketing campaign, that you monitor and optimize any performances on a regular basis. It could be Google AdWords, it could be uh, meta search bidding, it could be banner ads or whatever you can think of. Even uh, email marketing um, definitely helps um, to, to bring people to your website. So really the, the goal is to create the right offers at the right time for the right guest, but also through the right channel. The next slide, please. So price integrity. Um, we have a jungle of channels and so many systems we work with and so many partners. Um, my understanding is the best way to have a really good um, pricing strategy, which also keeps uh, price integrity, is to keep rate parity on OTAs. Um, when I speak about OTAs, I also mean meta search, of course, because at the end of the day, um, OTAs are listed on there. So make sure that you connect to all the big OTAs, um, keep parity and make sure that you connect to all the meta search websites available for your guests to be able to compare the pricing. Again, the, the website, the direct booking channel is obviously something you want to push. So um, it's always good to, to offer direct booking benefits, something um, they get, they wouldn't get if they book with Expedia or in any meta search website or any other channel. Um, really important is also for you guys that you're always yielding up price up and not down because you will find sometimes um, hotels are doing last minute deals or flash sales or things like that. But at the end of the day, it will give you a little bit of, of profit in that moment, but you might be actually frustrating your guests who have booked by far earlier and eventually paying more for the room. Um, rate comparison widgets are also a very good uh, tool or way to show transparency for the guest. You can see here on the slide in the right hand side on the corner. Um, this is an example with Triptys um, to just um, reiterating to the to the looker. Hey, you got the best deal here. So just make your booking right now. And why this is really important is because people Travelers now have control. They check on average 140 sites um, in within 45 day window, um, which is coming from the Sojourn Pass to Purchase report. And it's really important that when they come to your website, you keep them there. So don't lose them again and make them go back to booking, make them go back to Expedia or whatever. So that moment when they hit your website it should be the moment when you can convert them to be a direct booker. The next slide, please. Price value. Um, pricing is one thing. Um, the, the thing is that, that guests need to see what are they really getting for the price. And especially in terms of direct bookings, what is the value you have to offer? First of all, what you can do is you can use persuasive messaging just to gain trust, but also to, to create a sense of urgency. For example, you could say this offer has been booked 200 times in the last two days, or you only have uh, two rooms left, so hurry, book fast. Um, obviously, these numbers should be correct, so it shouldn't be a fake number sitting on any booking engine, but it should be the real availability. Um, also, promote discount rates. Um, use strike through features because the guest will see the value much higher once they see hey instead of two uh, paying 249 i'm only paying 176 now so let me make that booking so it's always nice to get a deal and everyone loves that so um making that visible is a really really nice tool to to increase conversion later on um finally member rates um of course, not every hotel or every chain has a full-blown loyalty program. Good news is you don't need this anymore. You can even offer member rates if you don't have a CRM. So make sure you, you have a system which can provide for that because in this case, it would be a rate for a closed user group and you're not getting into much trouble with the OTAs later on. So really, once they are on the booking engine, make sure that there are enough impressions for the guest, enough trust generated to the guest that they know I'm getting the best deal right now, right here, and make sure you can convert them in the moment they're on your booking engine. The next slide, please. So 
in total for the for the distribution strategy it's really important you have to understand your acquisition costs and values so when i speak about value um, i mean for example when a guest comes direct to your website the value for you is much higher why first of all you get all the data from the guest including email and and um, uh, address details which you're not necessarily getting from the ota booking but also um, in, in regards to the acquisition costs, it can actually change depending on the season. You will find that sometimes there are seasons where you have more uh, OTA bookings from certain regions. So it's really important you understand your market to make sure you can assign um, planned acquisition costs to it and only use um, most profitable channels later on. Um, Drive more direct bookings. Don't be scared. It's not about fighting the OTAs. It's not about winning above booking.com. It really is about making your own channel profitable. It is the easiest channel to manage. You have to put a little bit of effort in, in, in terms of marketing plan and distribution plan, but it's, it's very worthwhile um, putting that extra little bit in and will also increase loyalty for the guests later on. And once they had a good booking experience on your on your homepage, on your IBE, um, they will certainly book again on your homepage and you can save um, some expensive OTA commissions. So obviously make sure that you have a technology and a plan. So it's always about having a strategy, then having technology and then a good revenue management strategy to bring it all together. Um, earlier in the room, the question came up how we see um, distribution, revenue, marketing coming together. And I believe that at the end of the day, we have to work very, very closely with each other because um, if you don't consider all the different departments, um, you might not be able to, to do it as smooth as it could be. So really make sure you're using the right tool. Uh, make sure you're using partners like like Uli, for example, or, or Sojourn or other systems, Insight for Travel, who can give you demand data, who can help you analyzing your market. And um, once you have done all that, then you can really implement a nice uh, distribution strategy at the end. Okay, very good. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, Sojourn, I have a couple of questions for you, if it's fine for you. Uh, sure. The first one is, I see a lot of you know, controversy when it comes to OTAs. You know, some of us just think as OTAs as friends, not many. Uh, a lot of them just consider them enemies. Uh, some of them, they even consider them associates for some strange reason. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're just, as you say, uh, they are just tools. So why do you think that there is all this misconception about these tools that can be used to actually improve not only revenue but improve uh, you know awareness and, and brand presence on these uh, countries where otherwise they could never uh, they could never penetrate. Yeah, well, that's a very interesting point. And first of all, I think take the emotion out of it. We are not talking about friends or enemies here. It's a partner. It's a source of business. And at the end of the day, if you work proactively with the OTAs, they can provide a very good value. They can help you with statistics. They can help you with creating offers. Um, they very often know the market better than you do. For example, if as a European hotelier, you would like to, to, to market into China, speak to Seatrip, speak to Agoda, get help from them, and they can help you pushing that business you need. Um, also in terms of OTAs, I, I don't even understand why why people say it's an enemy at all, because no one is being forced to, to partner with everyone, right? So the hotel needs to be more confident to say, yes, I want to partner with you because I want to partner with you, not because I believe it has to be this way. So um, if you choose your OTAs carefully and your partners carefully, and it's a mutual good relationship, um, then it's absolutely fine working with them. So the one side has nothing to do with your direct booking channel. I mean, it's a different strategy. Well, totally. Let me ask you something else, you know, and uh, you, you kind of you started talking about it, but I would like to go a little bit more, more, more deep. And uh, we live in some kind of distribution jungle today, right? And yeah. we we're, we're seeing with the guys now, and we're talking about, you know, things like booking basic or or Expedia add-ons, or uh, you know, uh, resellers buying uh, old sellers' static rates and cutting markups, or OTAs cutting 
uh, commission to get the best rate. So, I mean, now, if I am an hotelier right now, you know, and I'm trying to give some kind of benefits to my, to my, on my, on my official website, uh, with this distribution becoming more and more uh, opaque, if you want, so where price control is pretty hard to reach, how can I make sure that I actually provide the best trade, or at least that I provide the best experience when it comes to my brand.com site? Yeah, I think the first step really is to review all programs very, very carefully. For example, um, this Booking Basic or Expedia add-ons, what they do at the end of the day, they're selling naked rates, right? For example, this Expedia add-on, this is supposed to be a packaged rate. So the room price shouldn't be disclosed um, later on. So this is something which I find tricky and, and not very elegant of doing that from the OTA side. But at the end of the day, um, speak to your partners if you don't want that don't offer package grades right i mean it's a giving and taking so making sure that you, you're not undercutting your own price is the highest priority you don't have to participate in everything for example if you look at booking genius program um, yes you can participate but make sure the value on your website is higher so it's really about taking control talking to these partners and also if these partners are in breach for example if you have a wholesale contract and they are not supposed to sell these as net rates cancel the contract there are so many partners out there where you can make business with if it doesn't work just cancel it and find a new partner who will listen more and who is on your side because at the end of the day we are all on the same side we all want to make profit so the oh. OTA and us so let's talk and do it together makes sense makes sense yeah and and obviously uh, what you can also do uh, Simone um, use dynamic rates as often as possible I believe that the wholesale rate business is, is has gone down uh, drastically uh, everyone is moving to dynamic rates if you're moving to dynamic rates you really have a good good point um, you can always yield uh, your rates up and down and you can always make sure that your booking engine has the best offer it's, it's interesting that you asked me this because one, one of the students I don't remember uh, it was somewhere over there but they asked exactly this question this morning and they said you know but if we have this if we have this problem with we all say that and we start rates, why mm -hmm. do we why don't we move to dynamic rates? And if you think about it, you know, this question is coming from a student, so it's not coming from an hotelier. So why mm -hmm. a student understand the core of the problem and an hotelier can't? Sorry, can you say the last sentence again? You know, uh, what we are, what, what that student was telling me today was, uh, you know, we have all these uh, old sailors reselling to third parties and undercutting rates, right? Yeah. So, uh, she said, you know, why don't we just move to dynamic rates? And uh, this is, it surprised me that a student uh, asked me a question that is so, you know, in your face. And, uh, and then you got hotels that are still struggling with uh, uh, FIT rates or, or study yeah. rates. They, they got this problem. Yeah, absolutely. And look, the thing is, um, I mean, 10 years, 20 years ago, when I started in hotels, there were no systems out there who could actually do dynamic rates. Yeah, so you, you were lucky if you had a contracted rate, it's a fixed rate and you know how to deal with it. But the, the um, strategy has changed so drastically in the past 20 years that you can see even classical wholesalers like hotel beds or GTAs are now moving to dynamic rates because they see they're not getting the rates anymore from the hotel because the hotels are very aware that there's sometimes a little bit of trouble and they might be giving that inventory to to a third party again who then discloses uh, on channels like Amoma, Octopus Travel or whatever. So um, really that is the way to go. Dynamic rates and um, most wholesalers are also understanding this is a requirement for the future and a lot of them are moving towards that. But um, developing the technology to allow for all this uh, not usually just takes a little bit of time. So it's, it's just a waiting game <laughs> until everyone does it. Thank you so much for, for your contribution. It was very, very appreciated. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I will, I will move to Ulrich. Ulrich, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, very good, very good. Okay. Can you see my screen, right? Yes, just move ahead. Should I start? Yeah, so let's start with Ulrich. So let's move to the first slide. I let you talk, and uh, if anything interesting comes up, I will stop you, okay? 
everything. Go. Good. Okay, ready, steady. Well, basically, to give you a bit of background, I mean, what we do is we basically uh, manage uh, hotel marketing campaigns for uh, improving direct bookings on the website. So we connect hotels to meta searches, but we also do other marketing placements. So just so you understand what my company does overall. And uh, what we notice is that obviously within this within this area, hotels have still significant problems, right? I mean, my own background is I did this in my in my own professional life in the past. I I I, I did this for uh, for example for Accor and for Hilton. I was working in e-commerce positions and we we're running marketing campaigns uh, on a global level for them. And at some point, I noticed okay, there are tons of individual hotels that obviously have similar um, similar goals, uh, improving their direct businesses because uh, OTAs are covering more and more of the share. When you look 15 years back, a lot of hotels had much more direct bookings at that time, obviously, through telephone and, and direct requests. And with the let's say with the growth of the internet, that business shifted more and more, obviously, online and not through the direct channels, but obviously through the OTAs, which is uh, costing hotels much more and more money. And we can see that uh, the challenges that hotels have nowadays is that you're obviously having problems in many Managing your online visibility because uh, that means if you want to be found with your website, uh, I mean, obviously you need to appear where people search. Uh, that's that's a core problem. If your website doesn't appear where people search, then you obviously are not really getting getting uh, any people on your website to book directly. Um, we also noticed that marketing is not necessarily a core competency within hotels, online marketing, because uh, it's it's very specific, it's very technical, it's very it's very numbers based. Uh, it requires software and technology, and uh, that is challenging uh, because it's time consuming on the one side, but it's also obviously a lack of knowledge and and the combination of both. So usually our t our clients are usually clients that decide for us because they either know exactly what they need, so they 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 but they don't have the time, or um, they also say we don't have the knowledge and and we need someone to to cover it. Um, Yes, and then and then measuring all these results and and then obviously understanding on how these platforms work. I mean, what are the dynamics of Google? What are the dynamics of Trivago and TripAdvisor? How do they work? Uh, it's a completely different different business model. You don't work on a on a commission model usually. You work on a cost per click. So you're buying uh, for clicks, but you don't know how what the performance is going to be. You don't know basically how people are going to convert on your website. So there are lots of challenges that are usually a little bit overwhelming. For individual properties, yeah? and on top of that, it's not the only thing hotels need to deal with. But there are tons of technical uh, uh, evolutions currently, and hotels are bombarded with with uh, tons of challenges, tons of like startups popping up, approaching them, selling them tech uh, technology uh, solutions, and many hotels are simply also overwhelmed by the choice uh, that is currently out there, and it's hard to distinguish between, let's say. The Good and the bad, and 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 what they should focus on, and what is important and what is not important. Next slide, please. Yeah. So in a way, what we what we basically do, uh, we're trying to we're trying to bridge that gap uh, uh, there. So on the one side, we 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 we're building basically. Uh, uh, a technology solution where we connect individual hotel websites to platforms like Trivago, Google, and, and TripAdvisor, but also others. And um, so that's the one challenge is that you actually need to show up with your website on, on those platforms. I have a few examples in a minute. Uh, the second thing is that obviously that you that you need to have tracking in place. So you need to you need to you need to have a solution that is showing you how much money you spend and how much revenue you get out of it. And on top of that, you need to manage those platforms. And for that. Uh, at my show, we provide campaign managers, basically like any regular marketing agency. So uh, we do the job for the hotel. So you basically outsource uh, this activity to someone external. Uh, we do it for you, and at the same time, at the same time, we obviously deliver you with uh, a certain uh, uh, reporting. And the reporting is not as it was 10, 15 years ago with an Excel file that you get sent by a web agency every every month. But you can access it in real time, and you can see exactly how much money you spend on which platform and so on. But let's dive uh, a little bit deeper into into how it looks like. Yeah. So next slide, please. So let's look at um, let's look at some some platforms. Okay, these are the platforms we connect. I mean, this is obviously just a range of the products. So you can see Momondo, Kayak, Trivago, and so on. And let's say we we try to 
place a hotel website on websites that are relevant. Let's say, I always say fish where the fish are, right? It doesn't make sense to do online marketing on platforms where nobody searches. It doesn't make sense to go on websites where there's no reach and no audience, but you need to go obviously uh, where the fish are. And usually it's, it's quite a simple uh, rule of thumb. Um, you can imagine if booking.com advertises your hotel on a platform, it's usually very worthwhile that you might advertise with your own website on the same platform. So whenever you see booking.com making advertisement for your hotel, you should look at that platform and should consider, can you do it yourself or not? Because that's literally what I did when I was working for hotel chains in the past. I was just looking at them because what what what, what is happening here? You're paying a commission to booking.com and booking.com goes on Google, buys traffic from Google that converts on, on booking.com. And with the commission you pay to booking.com, they pay the guys like Google and Trivago. So the very simple logic is, if you connect your website directly to this platform, you cut out one or two players out of the supply chain. And by going straight to those platforms, you should get the same client that you got before through an OTA. And you should now get it, obviously, through your own website, ideally for a lower cost. The problem is that... The business model is different. As I said, you need to pay for the click in most of the cases and not on a commission base. So you need to take the risk. But booking.com is taking the risk for you yeah, or Expedia. So now if you do it with your own website, the question is, why shouldn't it work? And Susanna just mentioned several things that are important if you do this kind of stuff. You obviously need a good website. So you need to have uh, a good converting website. On the other side, you also need to have a good pricing. So these things we've already covered. But the third most important leverage is that you also need to manage your visibility on these platforms. And for that, you need to understand how they work. So next slide, please. Let's take Trivago as an example. Okay, that's pretty small, but I mean, I guess most of you are familiar with Trivago. So on Trivago, you usually have a search platform. Then on that platform, usually if you search for your hotel, and if you don't, if you don't, if you're not connected yourself, uh, you obviously have all the OTAs popping up. So literally every hotel nowadays is bookable on Trivago, but obviously indirectly through guys like Expedia, Booking, Amoma, or whatever we Agoda or C Trip or whatever guys we heard today. So now you can connect your own website. It shows up with a little blue button. Yeah, and ideally, if you are on the top position, then you also show up on the on the top right position with the green button. Yeah, and but that is not always for granted. So uh, it's not coming by nature to uh, to show up with your website on that placement, but it's an auction, right? So to actually appear in the top position, there are various rules in place. I don't want to go into detail on that because that would require at least another half an hour. But um, let's put it that way. There's always a rule on every meta search with different adaptions and different variations. But usually the rule is you need to have a lower price than an OTA. That will help you to appear on top. The other, the other lever is paying a higher cost per click. So if you pay more than the others, you can also show up on top. And on some platforms, there are also some more algorithms in place, but let's put it that way, those two, those two levers are the most important ones, plus several other factors for the algorithm. So basically, you need to find the right mixture of price and cost per click. If you, for example, on rate parity, and you have no price advantage on your website, you end up being on top position only if you pay more than anyone else. Uh, as a rule of thumb, you could say, if you, for example, have a 5% lower price than Expedia and Booking.com, you might end up paying up to 20% less on the CPC. And that is kind of like a new way of revenue and visibility management if you want to be successful on this platform. Um, next slide, please. Here's an example of TripAdvisor. On TripAdvisor, you have exactly the same options. On TripAdvisor, nevertheless, you also have a business advantage, which you can see on the top right corner, which is like a static link. And on the top left, uh, bottom left, you can see the price comparison, which is a typical cost per click model. The business listing or business advantage, how they call it today, is a fixed price model, at least up to now. And uh, so you can buy both placements individually or also uh, together. Uh, and then you obviously need to measure the results on both placements as they are. Um, same, same story on TripAdvisor. Um, the, again, the bidding algorithms are slightly changing currently. TripAdvisor is currently doing a whole remodeling of the platform. You might have read it in the news. They want to go more towards a social network. Uh, also, in terms of the bidding strategy, they, in the past, they were very much relying when it comes when it came to ranking. They were much, very much relying on reviews. Uh, nowadays, CPC is becoming more and more crucial. So the the amount of money you pay to get more visibility. Again, uh, coming to the details of that, it would be too much for today. But it's a lot of work in the background. And if you wonder what MyTash does, it's exactly that kind of technology that we try to have bit 
management algorithms in place to find the best possible visibilities for the lowest possible cost. Next slide, please. Here you can see now um, a screenshot of Google, and I think most of you might be familiar with Google. Uh, I mean, all of you know Google Google AdWords. Uh, we also do Google AdWords, of course, on our site. Uh, maybe one important uh, news on that, um, and we held a large or long seminar, uh, webinar ourselves uh, one week ago, um, for, which lasted almost an hour. Uh, but Google is doing a lot of changes on their product. Yeah? Google, I mean, first of all, it starts with terminology. Google AdWords is not called Google AdWords anymore, but Google Ads. Um, small change, but for Google, this always means a lot. Uh, what actually does it mean that Google in the hotel product is obviously trying to uh, improve a lot of things in the user experience? You will still have the regular Google AdWords uh, um, um, results, which you can see the top four, which are marked as, as an advertisement. Uh, but on the right side, and you can go to the next slide now, if you search for your own Google hotel name, you also see now, obviously, the, the Google Hotel ads. So these are the price comparison of Google. And you can see on here on that hotel, you can see on top position that the hotel is also the, their own website uh, connected. Up to not long ago, Google Hotel ads and Google AdWords were two different products. They were also managed separately in separate algorithms, in separate interfaces. Uh, Google now is starting to merge these two products. So basically, uh, they already are in one interface. So you kind of not have to switch from interface to interface, but you can manage Google Hotel Ads and AdWords out of, out of one product. And it's obvious that within the next uh, six to 12 months, Google will also merge the algorithms. So in a way, to appear at the top, between AdWords or ads and hotel ads is obviously one algorithm, and therefore it's quite important if you want to be live on both placements that you really make sure that both placements are also managed out of one hand. I still experience a lot of hotels that have Google AdWords agencies, uh, just traditional web agencies in place. The problem of those web agencies, nevertheless, is that they don't have access to Google hotel ads because Google hotel ads is still technically uh, separated uh, because you need a price feed and the price feed you, for example, get from guys like SHR or Rate Gain. Yeah, so they are delivering the prices to Google and then someone needs to manage that your website is actually appearing on the top position. So again, that's exactly what you see here. If you need a little bit more detail on how the bid management works and how that is, uh, I'm happy to uh, give that uh, offline or, or in a separate call. But again, it's a little bit too much for the webinar today. But in the end, it obviously makes sense if you connect your website, that your website gets a certain visibility, that you're not showing up on position number seven or eight. And uh, to become a higher positioning and a higher market share and gain traffic to your own website rather than through booking.com and Expedia, I think it's quite obvious that uh, you need to understand how these platforms work and they can be very complicated. Just to give you a rough idea, on Google you can put different CPCs on length of stay, on the time uh, people search, on the device people search. So there are very, very many ways to optimize a campaign for you. And uh, the question is always, do you want to do it yourself or not? I mean, large hotel chains obviously have the resources, but we see that even small hotel chains and even individual hotels don't have the resources in-house to do it themselves. So that is exactly where we jump in and trying to support hotels uh, to, get, to get positive results on these places. Next slide, please. Quite important, and that is the overall, basically, story of, 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 of that day is, you need to keep your costs under control because if you work on a CPC model, you can easily lose a lot of money. And we actually implemented a super simple system for that because hotels are used to commission. Yeah, This is what you all know. So we actually go to the hotels and we tell them, look, you need to pay for the CPC, but we try to make it as transparent in a commission model as possible. So we tell a hotel, okay, you can upload your account, you can go in there and you can say, look, I want to spend a thousand euro on Trivago. And then basically the hotel gives us a maximum commission that they're willing to spend. Let's say a hotel says, okay, I'm willing to go up to 18%. Yeah? Or, or maybe to make it easy for calculation for mass reasons, let's say 20%. Because 20% is what you pay to Expedia and Booking.com as well. So if you spend 1,000 euro and you want to have 20% cost, you want to have 5,000 euro uh, revenue in return or more. And that's exactly how we work. We basically spend the 1,000 euro, we optimize the campaign, and if we gain 5,000 euro revenue or more, 
the hotel simply invests another 1,000 euro again. If the hotel gets less than 5,000 euro, we automatically stop the campaign and analyze what the problem is that the results are not good enough. So in return, the hotel has a safety that whenever they run a campaign and whenever budget needs to be refilled, it only happens if the gap or if the cap that they gave us is not exceeded. But it doesn't mean that they always pay 20% because if you optimize a campaign even better, they might end up in spending 5% or 6%. Yeah, that means they might make whatever, 20,000 euro revenue, it's also good. So it means that they make a 5,000 euro revenue minimum or more, right? And that's the core difference to a real commission model because on booking.com, you always pay 20% regardless. So in our, in our saying is if we optimize campaigns properly, and I can tell you that 25% of the hotels we manage, their costs are below 10%, which is significantly lower than OTA costs. The bookings come through their own website, they own the client, they own the data, they have a long-term relationship, they have a lower cancellation rate, a longer lifetime value. And that obviously is the goal. And this is exactly where we try to take the, the risk out of a meta search management that we say, look, it only have, you only keep on spending money if your results are positive and if your profitability is there. Nevertheless, we cannot take the risk completely away. So you can say basically for your first 1,000 euro, we cannot guarantee, but we know that Let's say 80% of our hotels are usually on, on as expensive or cheaper than OTAs. So in that case, I'd say the chance out of 10 hotels, eight hotels have good results and two don't. And if the two hotels with bad results don't work, they can immediately stop. So there's not, big, not a big risk. And then we can obviously analyze what they need to do better to perform in future. And that's also something we help on. Yeah, but it's very important to keep, uh, to keep track of your, of your revenues and, and your costs. Next slide, please which you can see here, and I just made a random screenshot of our, of our interface, but obviously you can log into our interface and we have a nice overview. You can go in real time reporting. You can see online exactly how much money did you spend? What is your return of investment? You can see it broken down by platform, broken down by market. So there are various filter possibilities, which I'm happy to show you in a, in a separate discussion. Next slide, please. Most of the people are obviously like, kind of like, okay, how do you work? And I already explained, you choose your budget, you put your market cap, so your, your maximum cost. And then we basically are able to connect you to all meta searches. It's very important that the CPC management is, is under control. But what we also noticed is that you really need to have a specialized, a specialized uh, personalized support. And the most important thing is, do you work as an agency? Yes, we are an agency on that, but most agencies work usually on a fixed price model. So we usually charge like 500, 600 euros a month. We don't do that. We work on a success-based model. So only if you make money, we make money. And that's exactly the model that we have. And that way, usually hotels, we're trying to cover the risks with them. If it doesn't work, they can stop. If it works, we grow with them. So that's basically, in a nutshell, how we work. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all these insights. Guys, I know this was a bit technical, so I don't know if you got lost at some point, but uh, we, we, we saw some of these things uh, today, you know, so you can understand that uh, sometimes uh, the hotel has to take some kind of risk to bid with uh, a CPC model instead to go with a commission model. But uh, without that risk, of, of course, you can start with, uh, uh, with, with the cost per acquisition that are always, uh, always the same. So. Thank you so much for that. I will just uh, would like to ask you one uh, one question. Uh, so, and this is more this is something guys we spoke about today. You know, remember when we spoke about the fact that we usually tend to consider and evaluate all our investments in terms of last click attribution. So, you know, the last click uh, before the actual conversion. Uh, but when it comes to meta search, uh, usually we see that meta search can be at the at the, at the top of the customer journey more than at, uh, at the bottom. So when, when you work with, with hotels, right, uh, do you prefer to look at uh, return investment in uh, uh, taking into consideration last click or first click or like uh, assisted conversion? What are your thoughts? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a very technical question and I mean, I hope that uh, most of the people on the webinar actually are familiar enough with uh, tracking tools and I don't want to get too techy now, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but, but generally speaking, it's like that. Yeah, generally speaking, it's like that. I mean, if you, if you are on, on a platform, you click on the hotel website, you are sent to the hotel website and then a cookie is set. And then if someone books 
usually you take a 30-day cookie window, so either someone books immediately or books within 30 days through the same device, through the same browser, then we can measure and, and attribute uh, that booking uh, to their respective platform. Um, the way, I mean, we work, and personally, we decided to work on the last click model. So we say the last click gets the attribution. And that means if someone clicks on Google AdWords, then comes back through TripAdvisor, clicks again, and then clicks on Trivago, then obviously Trivago would get that booking. Yeah? So um, you, you can argue about that. You can do first click or last click. I, uh, we, we just believe that last click is, is potentially the, still the better way to do it. Um, we also noticed that meta search are not necessarily always at the top of the funnel because in that case first click might be the better attribution for model for us but it's not about better or worse uh, I would love to actually go more into an attribution model where you can really see how people click and 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 move between platforms and then maybe have an attribution of 20% to this platform or 30% to that the core problem that we have is we are not booking.com and we are not our core we're talking about individual hotels and individual hotels sometimes only have 500 600 clicks a month sometimes even less that again puts a huge problem in terms of statistical values right because when you when you want to do proper statistical evaluations and and proper statistical uh, 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 yeah um, results you would need to have much more traffic yeah and in the end we optimize hotel by hotel by hotel of course we can opt we can look at a total portfolio for our own uh, uh, analysis but we also need to optimize hotel performance hotel by hotel and that means one hotel needs to work and if a hotel is very little traffic I mean it's very hard to actually come up with any kind of proper answer and and any kind of proper optimization if the hotel is very little traffic so so that's a core problem and I don't want to go too much into that but let's say if you don't have enough traffic I think there's not even a point in arguing about last and first click contribution you need to decide for a model and somehow you need to get you need to deal with the numbers that you have uh, if you're a big hotel chain and you have life with 1,000 hotels and you have like millions of clicks every month okay then you might have a much better view on attribution and can actually be much more into detail but on individual hotels if you dig down into detail from let's say 500 clicks you might up ending having 80 clicks from Trivago 50 from Google 200 from TripAdvisor it doesn't unfortunately tell you anything so that is really the core problem in 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 going more into attribution we we unfortunately that's a big disadvantage of individual hotels is we have less data and that also gives us unfortunately less options to analyze in detail one benefit we have at my show obviously with 1700 hotels we can make judgments on the portfolio and then re bring it back into the individual hotel. But still, that doesn't help us on the tracking with the attribution. Sorry, that, okay. that was a very technical answer, but it's not easy to answer a difficult no, no, question. It's great. It's <laughs> I honestly thought you worked on a, on a first click attribution model, so I was impressed to know that you work on a last click attribution model. So it was very interesting for me as well. You know, just, uh, guys, I, please, one key question for me uh, you know, from time to time. So thank you so much. Um, Alejandro, are you there? So I think uh, we got a little background noise that was me. Uh, we're sorry, that should be okay now. Uh, Alejandro, can you hear me? I am. I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So uh, is it better now? Can you still hear your noise? Oh, no, no, no. That, that's perfectly fine right now. Very good, very good. Okay, great. So um, just uh, please go to the next slide. So Andrew, this is all yours. I let you talk. You know, you know what you're doing. You don't need my help. So just uh, go in and stop you at the end for a couple of questions. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much, Simone. So, so mm -hmm. give you a quick get, heads up to everyone in the in the webinar. So first, um, thank you all for being here. Um, we are hosting. This is Reagan. Reagan, as as you may know, and now with Disco being a Reagan company, we are becoming the global powerhouse in terms of distribution in the world. Um, Disco is, is a switch which connects to the largest 200 chains in the world, connected to all the CRSs out there. Uh, and Raygain is, is a SaaS company, um, which its core business is um, rate intelligence, data delivery, rate comparison for end-to-end -end travel and hospitality industry. So we do airlines, we do hotels, we do cruise lines, we do car rental companies. So we basically do it all. So I think we can go to the next slide. And um, I'm, I'm going to start to be a little bit controversial. So let, let's go next. And um, first of all, um, and Simone knows me, 
first thing I would say is the, the webinar is called the price value, but I, I would just turn that around and, and ask you to all think about what is the real value of price when we distribute. And, and basically I started saying what needs to be considered as a successful pricing strategy. And, and the first thing, and I'm gonna talk a lot about culture because that's my background. So um, first you need to leave your prejudices at the door. So you, you have to take a clean slate. The problem with hoteliers, uh, and, I'm a, and I'm a hotelier, I was born a hotelier as I, told, uh, as I told the classroom before, is that we come with a lot of prejudice around price. And we think that we know price better than market, better than client. And, and at this millennial age, that's not the case anymore. The other thing is you, you understand the current state of affairs. Um, I think Susana covered it very well in terms of data and, and Uli also touched based on data as well as being a must have in terms of technology and platforms and data. If not, this is like uh, you're driving blind guys and, and it's impossible to, to drive blind. Um, there might be one or two that can do that, but it's, it's sheer luck. So you, you need to know what technologies out there, companies like Uli's, companies like Shushana's, people that we already work with. In the case of Sana, we, we have a global partnership. So we, 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 they, we then say that this goes all into a three pillar fundamental. So it's having data to make decisions to then make distribution. And if you think that way, that funnel is very streamlined. And, and that's what you need to do to actually today have a very successful business. But it all starts with the data that you collect. And you have a lot of data, whether you realize that or not. The thing is, you might have not used it before. Um, the other thing is we need to start thinking holistically. So pricing is only one very tiny component of your um, business value and or your business proposal. Um, your brand is not only about price. If your brand is only about price, then you're only targeting a very tiny segment of people. Um, you haven't lost the fight against OTAs, and I'm going to bank on what Susanna said before. It's, it's not a fight, again, as I, I agree with her. Um, I only want to say, and, and this is addressed to all major chains in the world and everything, because I always say it in the webinars, is that if you think you're fighting OTAs, then you're completely wrong. If you think that the the challenges to beat OTA is, is completely wrong. Um, just to give you an example, I would tell hotels in the US to be worried about self-driving cars rather than OTAs, because um, in the future, you will be able to sleep in a car and not use a hotel anymore. And, and that's where everyone says, wow, right? So that, that's the idea. They all go crazy. Um, or perhaps in India, if, or even in the States, because they're trying it in the States as well, you get Hyperloop take you from San Francisco to New York in three hours. So bye-bye hotels, bye-bye flights, actually. I don't know what airlines are thinking about that, but that's a major risk. And then also, I think that the problem with our industry that's always been this enmity and this, this not willingness to share data and to work together. Um, actually, if you think of it, um, uh, let's just say initiatives like AccordHotels.com, picking up uh, data hotel or small hotels, um, or even booking suite could be a good example. Um, you, you don't see the collaboration. It's just acquisition and merging of products, but it was not collaboratively done with the hotels, which are one of the biggest pieces of this value equation in travel and hospitality. So the bottom line, I think, is everything that we've discussed right now can be achieved if we take a 180 degree cultural change. So we cannot think that our hotels, there are only two people that care about revenue and price and distribution. So everyone has to live that. So revenue ideas come from the weirdest of places. If we only think that the revenue manager is the sole owner of price in a hotel or marketing is the only one that does marketing in a hotel, then we're completely wrong. So I think we can go to the next slide. So I, I think the first thing you need to do for a better price value is stop losing money first. Hotels don't understand that they are losing money every single day. So you have what we call at Reagan revenue leaks um, that you're not even aware of. And they're, they are price detractors from, for people, right? So there are things like environmental leaks. So hotels thinking that they know the market better without data uh, because they've been there. They know the market for years and everything, but they didn't change with the market. Or they have what I call dead competitor sets. So basically it's the same competitive set for, for the last 17 years. 
And now you're again, you're not competing with the same hotels anymore. Um, and then having very limited or no, no data driven distribution. So I'm just selling to the channels that I see because everyone else does it. And maybe it's not the highest yielding channel for me. So if you have no data, you have no chance of success. The other thing is the brand leaks and, and I take Simone and I have to credit Simone for this because he actually built this concept of brand jacking. And um, I actually mentioned Google in there because Google opening up AdWords for everyone to use any trademark name is a clear brand jacking tactic, right? So hotels need to be prepared and to come up with ideas how to do this and how to work on traffic with this because if not, it will be impossible. And you have people that are experts on, on the subject like Uli and his company. So I would, I would very urgently suggest you that you seek out their advice. Um, the other thing is not curating content. So I go and look for content about hotels on YouTube and they, they weren't even aware that they have videos made by clients on YouTube or Instagram that are showing a bad experience and, and they never even saw it. So that is already telling me something as a client. It's already telling me something as a, as a prof professional and surely it's, I'm not going to stay at the hotel, right? So you, you have to become a content curator at some point. And then we say, we, you use parody and I actually like the word disparity. Well, so if, if you saw Susanna's uh, slides, she was saying, keep parodies on OTA. And that's a very clear indicator of what you need to do. So your direct channel is your direct channel. And if you're doing the same thing on that, than on the OTAs, then guys, you're in for a treat. Um, you, you have to do it wisely though, um, using parity or disparity. And remember, we're not talking about price here. Disparity can be driven with inclusions. We can be driven with cancellation policies. It can be given with free treats or even with inventory. So, so again, prices is, is a component of what we're discussing here. Um, I, I call it parity a, a, a curvers that you, you, have, you need to have on a tight leash. Um, so you have to use it, but it, it, it's not that you use it every single time. Then there's a, there's a culture gap and, and, and there's a culture leak at hotels, which I see that they still don't value diversity on the road and that they still think that they hire maids to be maids and, and restaurant people to be restaurant people. And that's completely off and we need to change that as an industry. And I, I would like the industry to go into a place where we create a gig, what we call the gig economy, that you have people to do specific projects and tasks and, and that are ba basically time bound and, and not for a position itself. And, and our leaders also should be hired for gig economies. And, and that's what um, some of these latest initiatives I, I told you about on, on very big chains actually to have a lot of support actually got it wrong because they were thinking about solving a problem with current status quo positions and not thinking about the gig that the people had to do. And maybe for that gig, you hire someone out of college that was going to Google or you just hire a cashier from a supermarket. It's the same thing. It's what they bring um, uniquely to this project, right? And then it's also the experience leaks. And, and with this, I mean, um, hotels have still to care about the customer journey and what we are offering. So the experience is not curated. Booking into one of the big chains um, hotel sites, it's a nightmare still. Um, I, and and I, I can put it with a, with a personal example. I'm a Merit Rewards user worldwide. And yesterday I was making a reservation and um, I was surprised to see that they have this trivia collection offering on their site, which is homes, basically. It's Airbnb by Marriott, right? And, but the same funnel for booking is, is there. So we haven't gotten the, the booking funnel for hotels right, and we're now adding homes. So there, there's a fundamental problem there. You, you need to first get it right, right? Before adding a lot of other things. And that will lead us into one thing that I think it's very, very, very important that is hyper-personalization. We cannot make cookie cut the offerings anymore. People are waiting for one-to-one -one pricing or, or what I call, if you, if you call it a holistically, product proposals or experience proposals. Um, so until we get that right, I, I, I see this outcome very bleak for a lot of hotels. So, and then we can go to the last uh, slide, please. And, um, and, and so the insights and actions I have for you 
and then trust me that price will follow if you if you do all of this is first of all transform your brand into a living entity not centered around price anymore have it engage clients the brand has to talk one-on-one -on -one with people um, people have to understand that they're not only a transaction it, they are not only traffic it's more about it's more than just about money um, the other thing is um, I, I always stay at hotels and they get mad at me but I say stop complaining about the problems and and try and find solutions own the innovation um, people were complaining about OTAs then Airbnb comes in and they complain about regulations and everything but Airbnb only did one thing was find a niche find something that was not being offered and did a great job about it. And hotels could have done it before, but they were too lazy to do it. Um, and and that you can quote me on that. Um, then again, when you make price decisions, always, <clears throat> sorry, always save a seat for your Frank at that meeting uh, with your revenue manager, marketing team and everything. And what do we mean by this? So there's a concept in, in marketing and sales, which is that you have a Frank, which is your target customer, the people that you're aiming for, so when th there's a lot of CEOs and boards that do this, they build their, their meeting around this and they leave a blank seat and they put a picture of a face of someone that's been a client. And whenever they start making decisions, the first thing that pops up or the first question that pops up is, what would that guy say about my ideas? Right? And that's the, the mirror you cannot detract from. That's the mirror that will always tell you the truth. Um, then create a welcoming, inclusive culture at your hotels or any place that you work with. Again, foster innovation, foster sharing ideas. Ideas can come from all places in the world. I forgot, I have come revenue and pricing ideas come from uh, bellboys, from, from people like I, I said, maids, laundry. Um, and I covered all the, the, let's just say, departments at a hotel. So please do not discriminate people for position and just listen them out. Actually, clients are very good sources of ideas and pricing ideas and, and idea sharing. And then one thing I want to close with this is you need to master the customer journey. So if it's traffic and it's pre, post, and then pre, during, and post experience and stay, there's a ton of free tools that you can do. There's a ton of paid tools that you can do. Stop thinking about tools or, or technology investment as an expense because it's an investment. So let's just start using our words right. And, and the goal here is to get the guests that think that there's no conversion needed. They just need to adopt what you're selling. So there's a big difference. Conversion is about a transaction. Adoption is about believing in what you're picking up. So put the focus on you and not your price. Price is only but a mere component of it. So thank you very much, everyone. So thank you, thank you very much, Ayanda. That was very, very inspirational. And uh, so I have a question for you, and uh, that is not a technical question because I really love something that you you say before. And you know, we kind of really, uh, you know, when you talk, it's like it's like I hear myself talking sometimes because we have very similar opinions when it comes to a lot of a lot of these topics. And uh, you know, I would like to leave. And close this webinar with a beautiful message for for the students as well. You know that will, again, they will be the the CEO of the future. They will be the marketers of the future. They, they will basically take our place, my friend. So and uh, and I want to you know you work in hotel for for all of your life. I work in hotel for all of my life. You actually were born there, so you know exactly how it works. And you know that uh, whenever it comes to hotel, there is a lot of ego. Uh, and, and vanity involved. So you know there is this beautiful, this beautiful quote of uh, Suryeski that I, that I told you the other day. You know that everybody, every company wants to be flat. You know it looks like today it's a buzzword. You know that wants to be flat and it wants no no hierarchy at all. And they want to be Google like or they want to be Netflix like. You know, but they never do it. And, uh, and there is this beautiful quote. And just I wrote it down because otherwise I always forget it. It's he said, power is not being delegated so much as the illusion of power. And that is kind of true, you know? You get this, uh, still this uh, very snobby general managers or very snobby uh, hotel owners that just, they don't care about all the great, amazing ideas that are coming from, from their staff. So how can you 
and this is I'm talking to you like more on a hotel point of view here than a mm -hmm. point of view. How could you really create a culture of of sharing and a culture of uh, you know flat, uh, no hierarchy, uh, organization in uh, in properties, you know, in a in a big industry that is so you know so bizarre in a way like the hospitality one. Well, it's it's a very good question, Simone, and and I'm gonna try and make it. Um, like it's a phased answer. And uh, the first thing is uh, I'm a fan of A-B testing. Maybe it's my path at booking.com. I, I used to work for the B giant. So, so the first thing I do is um, you, you, you need to test out. And, and I like um, the committee, what we call the committee-based model, where you create committees for specific projects or gigs. And you can have a lot of people from different backgrounds building into that, right? And, and that would be a good idea of how to eliminate silos, to actually take the egos out. It's a round table. Actually, I used to do it in one of the hotels with, with the general manager. So the general manager would sit at some, and then the other people would sit down on the others. And then one boat is, is one person, right? And, and they would get faster results than any other hotel in that region for that company. And I, I think they had an uplift only on, because the project was centered, the first project we did was centered around um, ancillary and, and food and beverage expense on, on minibars, um, they sell 200% more in a month. Wow. Okay. So that, that's big. So, that, so that's, that's one of the things. The other, the other good news I'm going to give that classroom is uh, you mentioned that the, the very old people are controlling this and everything. So good news, guys. One is, one is natural and one is, so, so let's just say one is organic, the other one is inorganic. <laughs> I know so, where you're going. So, so, so the inorganic, the, yeah, so, exactly. So the inorganic one is that the market is changing so fast that you need to adapt or die, and that's all that that you can see that already. The other one is that eventually all these people will die, and you will be um, commandeering or steering the wheel at these boats. So, so we need you with a fresh perspective. It's it's not about the guys that are already there; it's the guys that are coming in. And, and I think it, that's the value I see in, in sharing all this knowledge. Uh, Sudo Weki says it very well. Um, it's not about like empowerment or giving out the power, but the illusion of power. And, and if we do that, then we're getting it wrong. I think empowerment and self-empowerment is very important. Uh, that's one. And then um, I think I can close with, with um, two quotes from the same person, which, which I quite admire and he's no longer with us, and you will know who I'm talking about. But then the first thing is, um, the first one he said, with, basically he was talking about hiring, and he said, we hire people to tell us what to do and not the other way around, right? And, and that has to be key. And, and his parting comment on a, on a public speech was, stay hungry and stay foolish. So I always write, rise up in the morning, and, and I think whether I'm being foolish enough for the day. So and being hungry enough for the day. You were today, my friend. Thank you so much for that. Guys, we, we took a little more, you know, we went a little extra with timing. So this lasted more, more than one hour. I want to thank you, everybody, for, for the patience and for the great uh, insights. I want to thank everybody that is, uh, uh, I see they're logging out right now. So thank you for staying with us until the end. I want to thank all these guys here for being with us. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, made it possible with an applause for Alejandro and uh, Susanna and Ulrich. Thank you so much, guys. So we meet again for the next great game seminar. Just uh, make sure that uh, that you are up to date with everything we're doing. Thank you so much, guys, for 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 having me. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. And uh, let's speak soon. Bye. Thank, thank you very much. That's it,